you ever wonder why the letter A has two legs, it may be hard to believe. But what if I told you these two legs are actually the horns of an ox, and that the letter A, as we know it, was actually upside down? Most people live their lives reading and writing without ever making this question. After this video, you'll become part of the select group of people who know why our letters have the shape they have. And into the bargain, you understand how they came from this script, and how the Chinese alphabet, which seems so complicated, actually works in a way that's way closer to ours than you can imagine. To start, you may be wondering, how come I never thought about asking where does the shape of our letters come from? And it's not only you, everybody's taught to just memorize. Our alphabet exists for 3000 years, but people only found out where it came from 100 years ago. That is to say, people only copied and repeated without questioning for 3 millennia. That's why in order to understand our script, we need to look back to when they discovered where it came from, approximately 100 years ago. It happened in a temple of Hathor in Egypt, which was being excavated by a couple of archaeologists. Inside it there was a single sentence found scattered around the temple. It looked like some kind of summoning, but it was neither in our alphabet nor in Egyptian hieroglyphs. It was actually a system between both. The summoning was a drawing of the following letters, M, D, L, B, L, D, which meant to the lady. Sentences like this were part of prayers directed to Lady Hathor. Can you see the likeness to our letters? Here you can see the zigzag of letter M and the little cross on T. But you may wonder, why were these the drawings chosen to be the letters? Why did M end up looking like this, and not like this, or like that? And that's where the hieroglyphs come into play, and I will show you they are not as complicated as they look. Hieroglyphs are pictures, each representing something from reality. For instance, to write water we just drew waves, and you already know this shape, it's the old form of letter M, to say man you trace a man. Easy right? But on a second thought, what if you wanted to say words such as beautiful or reward? And that's the fun part. For abstract things we need some tricks. The idea the Egyptians had was to combine two pictures. For instance, to say reward in old Egyptian, you combine the picture of a loaf of bread with a row of papyrus. Together they evoke the meaning of material earnings. That's an example of how you construct one idea from two. And you'll see how with just one step further we get to our letters. Because someone will say, okay, but can you really represent everything just putting pictures together? And the answer is actually no. For example, what do we do about people's names? It sure would be hard to create a drawing for every person that exists. And that's where we get to our alphabet. The big idea was to combine the sound of a word with the meaning of another, since some names are only sounds. So to write the name of the god Gab, which starts with a G, we bring together the symbol for God with a letter for the sound of G. Together, God and G made us understand that's about this god that starts with a D. And the final step to get to our alphabet was as if we left only the G, taking it only for sound, no longer caring about the meaning. For example, suppose we want to write the name Diana. Let's start with an object that starts with Di. Now take an object that starts with A and another that starts with Na. We wrote Diana by just getting the first syllable of a diamond, an ant, and a napkin. Are you able to read Diana on these three pictures? Each one there is only for the sounds, they are no longer here for the objects. And that's how our letters were born. By taking one drawing for each sound, they outline the shape of every letter. If we take a look at letter B, for instance, it was a drawing of a house. This little entrance here was a door. Of course in English, house is with an H. But back in antiquity when they made the alphabet, house was with a B. House actually still starts with a B in languages that come from the same origin. In Hebrew, for instance, house is said bite. But for most languages in the world, people just repeat that shape. If it ever was a house, it doesn't matter anymore. Because nowadays, that drawing is only there to be a sound. And the same thing happened to the other letters. Some of them underwent huge changes, such as letter A. It's actually upside down because it was the head of an ox. So the legs we have today, in truth, are horns. Letter O is quite similar because it's an eye. Letter M was a snake, and so on. And that's why you can say our alphabet is phonetic. The phone part of phonetic is the same phone from telephone or earphone. It means sound. And that's because our letters are sounds. The images doesn't matter. But if you found this interesting, you may be wondering, where do these alphabets with lots of strokes such as in Chinese and Japanese come from? So get ready to be surprised, because despite looking so complicated, I will show they come from the same idea as ours. 
And into the bargain, I'll tell you why there is two U's in the second most spoken language, even though they look so incomprehensible. Just like the hieroglyphs, everything came from drawings. Let's take this character for instance, it means person, and it came from the side view of a stick figure. The shapes you have today are simplifications. These two strokes that were curved ended up becoming two straight strokes, and this happened to all of them. If we take the character for a fish, for example, it was a detailed drawing, but now it's made of squares. Each of these simple strokes you have today, back then were complicated drawings. And that was a great thing to happen. Can you imagine how hard it would be to make perfect drawings every time you need to write? And so we don't need to memorize different drawings for everything that exists. The Chinese have the same idea we just talked about. That one back from Egypt. Bringing pictures together. For instance, if we put the character for person with a hand, we have the character for give. If we put fish with water, we get the character for fishing, but let's remember the Egyptians. It's not possible to represent everything that exists this way. Eventually, we are going to need to represent things using only sounds. The Chinese also realized that by using sounds, instead of only bringing meanings together, the script could become even simpler. And that's why they started to have inside characters one part to represent sound. One example is the character for wrap up, which is the drawing of a child within the uterus. Look at how it appears inside all of these characters. This part indicates how they sound like. Let's check their pronunciation. In Chinese, all of them have a sound close to bao, while in Japanese, all of them are pronounced ho. In other words, one of the roles of this pair that is equal in all characters is to indicate their closing sound. The vast majority of letters in Chinese and Japanese have this part that indicates sound. You can see that the same idea of representing sound with a picture that was used to create our letters was also the idea that created 90% of Chinese characters. And you may still say it looks hard. And maybe to learn it actually is. In China and Japan, children study them for 12 years from elementary to high school. In Japan, there is even a phonetic alphabet akin to ours, which is taught to children before the characters to help them read. But if it's this complicated, why is it still used? One of the answers is, even though it's hard to learn, once you know how to read it, it's even easier to read than ours. In order to understand why it's true, think about a traffic sign. Why do we use pictures and not words in the signs? You must have seen a bifurcation sign, but why have you never seen the word bifurcation written instead? And that's because with a drawing we can understand it faster, leading to quicker reflexes. It takes some small but decisive time for our brain to read each letter, associate to sound, then transform sounds to meanings. But with a picture, everything is quicker. We can immediately understand what it's about. And it's the same thing in Chinese and Japanese. Imagine how it would be to read a sentence written in pictures. If I give you this sentence in emojis, it's easy to tell it's about fishing. You can understand the meaning way faster. It's just like road signs. And don't think I'm making this up. There were even studies showing that reading in Chinese is faster. But despite this, many countries in East Asia, which for many centuries used this writing system, in the end stopped using it for political reasons. One example is Korea, which for a long while was influenced by the power of China, but later came up with a new alphabet created by themselves. Another is Vietnam, which moved from the Chinese script to the Roman alphabet. But anyway, the Chinese script is in fact so good that it's been used for 3000 years straight, being the script used for the longest time in history. And from now on, if someone asks you where these alphabets come from, you know the answer. For more stunning fun facts like these, don't forget to subscribe and to share this video.